Yeah, this is um, uh, additional topic about regarding this conformity. That uh, do you agree this concept that uh, there are those cycles that, for example, when there are tough times, it brings out of tribe uh, good leaders, and when the clock hits opposite side, uh, when the times got uh, comfortable, then the leaders becomes really become really weak and weak and weaker. So are we in this cycle uh, somehow? Well, I don't know if it's a, well, it's a pattern. I don't know if it's a cycle, but certainly. Um, you can see that uh, when you have a genuine crisis, um, if you're fortunate enough to have good leaders, then you will come out of it well. And if you don't have good leaders, then you're in trouble. I mean, I think Ukraine's a perfect example of, a, of like you. I mean, actually, Zelensky was like, eh, okay. I mean, he's not bad, not great, but he's not bad. And then came the war, and it turned out he was a genuine leader. Um, whereas you see in other countries that don't have as crises as bad as that, but certainly I would say, uh, I mean, we do, I mean, we have a crisis, cr several crises right now, and, uh, we don't really see many people sort of in Europe, especially Western Europe coming to terms with their genuine, with the nature of the crisis. Mm, I would say that my own prime minister is someone who has actually been, really excellent with the crisis uh, becoming against all odds a genuine leader in Eastern Europe uh, because she's willing to take steps and say things that other people aren't um, so not everyone is um, I mean you end up getting leaders that are often unexpected Absolutely, I agree. Absolutely. And uh, actually, uh, I could say that uh, from Latvian point of view that uh, I have really uh, kind of not healthy envy regarding uh, Estonia in terms of leadership, what presidents you have had, what prime ministers you have had, because we have had in Latvia a lot of more old guard guys all around, all around the place. And uh, maybe you could, uh, maybe you see some reasoning why is that, why is this different in terms of leadership uh, in uh, our two countries? Well, I don't want to comment on Latvian internal affairs. You have an election tomorrow, so you, you can change it, right? <laughs> okay, um, help us. <laughs> no, no, just what, what's your observation, uh, Mr. Elvis? Uh, Elvis, oh, sorry. Uh, what's your observation? Because there are some kind of uh, principles in place. Maybe the, the, the question, question is about uh, 1990s, that the early stages, how the stage was set, uh, that in Latvia there were a lot, lot more impact from uh, really, really old guard, uh, guys uh, who are like just uh, getting uh, quick, quick bucks. In the first years there and uh, in Estonia it was like a little bit more uh, I don't know honest and transparent but that was that is my perception well I think one I mean there's bizarrely enough I think one of the problems that Latvia had was how you privatize things yeah exactly exactly yeah and we opted for the Troihand model which was used in East Germany um, which is extremely transparent basically it was mm. the quality of what you're offering whereas the I don't, know, I don't know exactly how it was done in latvia but in a lot of countries they were just like okay um we'll sell it to the highest bidder and um and we'll uh, but first we'll give everyone um what do you call them um vouchers yeah yeah and the problem with vouchers is that as soon as you distribute the vouchers, the value goes down. And so those people who have access to cash, lots of cash, will buy up the vouchers at a very low cost. I mean, basically, you know, Deripaska and people like him bought... Billionaire from uh, Russia, right? Deripaska. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, yeah. I mean, he bought, like, he bought like the world's largest nickel plant for like, you know like a small, oh, small percentage of, yeah, yeah nickel, I mean, yeah. um, of what it was really worth, because the problem was you, you give vouchers to everybody. And then, of course, the voucher isn't, the value goes down, and you can end up buying, you know, voucher just for a bottle of vodka or something. I mean, it may be, say, it nominally, it says it's worth $10,000, but it's actually worth, you know, whatever, 15 cents. Mm. So if you have access to cash, you can buy all of these vouchers. And so what you ended up, that led to the oligarchization of Russia. And 
To me, it strikes me that Latvia ended up with some oligarchs, which then had their own part, each had their own party. I won't mention names, but you know who they are. You know, who had, you know, a, a railway and who had food and who had an airline. and. But you won't mention them. <laughs> That's a nice. That is nice. A way not to how to not to mention. Okay. Oligarchs deciding the yeah. political future of the country. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I remember this uh, period in which uh, question was: Would Latvia go over to the euro or not? Um, so there were three oligarchs, and basically it was like. Two out of three would vote, right? I don't know how they voted. I mean, which who voted what? But the point is, for which oligarch would the, the euro be a good idea and for which would be a bad idea, as opposed to what's good for the country? You know, it's just like for my business, is the euro good or is the euro bad? Uh, and uh, then the, and but since you own a political party, then you can go and you know, tell the political party to support the, Euro, the going over the euro or not support going over the euro. And that, I think, was a big problem. I mean, it was kind of the, it was from the 1990s that came into the 2010s, you know, like what was, so that's one problem, I would say that, um, Actually, I, I could just maybe maybe sorry. I, I could add on that that actually uh, I think that we are still dealing with this uh, with the consequences of that still thirty years later uh, from my perspective. But the other thing I which I think is something that Latvia needs to do is it really needs to digitize in a big way mm. because I mean for the past I don't know how many years seven eight nine years. I mean, Latvia is a country that has 40% more people than Estonia, right? I mean, and your state budget is smaller than ours. And you have exactly the same tax system as ours. 20% VAT, corporate per personal income tax, 20% across the board. So the identical tax system and you collect less, your state budget is smaller than ours. That, I mean, now what that comes from, to my mind, is that the taxation system is not working. You're just taking in less money. I mean, if you have the same taxation rates, but you have less money, well, then it must be the taxation system isn't working. So, and what made got helped Estonia get out of that is that the taxation system is fully digital. I mean, you just do it. So uh, Latvia, which is, as I mentioned, the population is 40% larger than ours, but Estonia has 1300 people working in the tax administration and Latvia, at least when I looked two years ago, had 5,400. So 40% more people, 400% more people working in the tax authority, which tells me it's not very digitized because you have, I mean, you have four times more people working on collecting yeah, yeah, less yeah, taxes. Yeah, yeah. Something is not working. I don't know what it is that's not working. I can't really criticize anyone for doing something badly, but I, for us, the solution has been digitization and it's had a huge effect in corruption reduction. We're now one of the least corrupt countries in Europe because it's so hard to bribe a computer. You can't bribe a computer. So if all these services are, are digital, there's no room for corruption. And so you collect taxes better, you you know, you collect fines and speeding tickets and all those things work because they're all digital. And so I would say that's one thing that Latvia needs to do is digitize. Mm -hmm. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. By the way, uh, just on a small uh, side note, uh, I just thought uh, that um, so I have a startup. Uh, valuation is five million euros. And I was just uh, kind of talking with Estonian investors. 
by the way, as well, this is kind of really, I thought, oh, when I'm calling, okay, I'm talking with those uh, English guys and I'm talking with uh, Estonians. Yeah. So this is kind of, uh, again, thank you, thank, thank you to your, your uh, New Jersey um, uh, programming teacher. Mm-hmm.